Welcome to Insights for Manufacturing, a podcast that supports the UK manufacturing sector. Hosted by Jeff Beecham, the manufacturer's recruiter. Right, so I think we we spoke earlier about things like Brexit and uh, and the pandemic having a you know an impact on well on, every, on everybody, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, you know, you you were talking about the the ability to uh, to lead, you know, crisis management you know any businesses that and and particularly you know leaders and ceos i suppose in in particular you know that that haven't had that resilience and you know the ability to to lead in a crisis uh you know uh, we're either going to be on dodgy ground or probably you know gone by the wayside um how how does coaching a mentor in address the the sort of strategic decision making needed in an environment particularly in uk manufacturing where things are just changing all the time i think it's all in the the actual sentence there strategic decision making that is exactly where coaching mentoring comes in it is literally one of the cornerstones of both coaching and mentoring stepping out of the situation stepping out of the now to actually look at bigger problems in the big picture around you yeah and look for those road bumps that are coming up don't wait till you hit them you hit a pothole, you've got a puncher. Yeah, you, sh- you should be looking to avoid or, or swerve around those. So that for me is about bringing the different strategic thinking. And it's also about sharing and understanding a multitude of different tools that are out there mm. to help make sure you're making the right decisions in the right way and you aren't basically drowning in the day-to-day. Things like the Eisenhower Matrix, which is quite a famous one, that you basically, it's a full block you look at if everything's important and urgent. And depending on where you put it in that block, it helps you prioritise pause or stop doing things there's yep. things like that that a lot of companies a lot of people aren't using uh, if you if you know them you know them it's like oh yeah I know that. but there are dozens and dozens and dozens of organizations that would be an absolute mind blower to, to even think about looking at yeah um there's, there's other tools like the six hats that i talk about as well to make sure the decisions you are making have been looked at from six different ways rather than just how we normally do it yeah when you've got economic shifts when you've got the world changing around us so quickly and Big mistakes wipe out companies. Medium mistakes wipe out companies in midterm. And you, you can't come back from it at the moment when you've got the cost of uh, running the business, whether it be the, cost of the personnel, the actual energy to run it, the, the items that you're purchasing, the supplies, everything in between it is going you know, the wrong way at the moment. Most of the industry mm. having that different thinking and looking at it differently and stepping back from the day to day on it is a really, really strong way to make sure you're doing it the right way, just not yeah. just the way you've always done it. It's probably never been more important, to be honest, to be making that sort of decision, not on your own, and maybe not with your existing team that have always made the decisions, unless they've been hitting the ball out of the park every time, in which case, well done, you've got a fantastic team around you. Yeah. But even then, could you have had a better result if you'd have just stepped a little bit further back from it and maybe put different thinking into it from within the team in different elements? Because that's another thing. When you're making some of these decisions, are you using the whole team when you're making the decision-making? Conversation mm. we had earlier, one of the strongest people I ever worked with would come into the room with the problem they had and where they were with it and ask the management team, where do we go from here? What do we do? What would you do? How would you approach it? Yeah, They are experts in all their own fields and they will give you that extra knowledge, that extra understanding, that extra way of approaching it that makes you know, one plus one, ten. Yeah, I always talk about one plus one is three, but sometimes it just changes the thinking and it does it differently. So that I think is where coaching and mentoring helps. And it yeah. also helps if you've got, uh, it's working with individual sets, senior executives and the business owners to coach them and their decisions and make sure they're all fully formed and yeah, too scary to run with you or too scary not to run with it. Yeah. That's kind of a different way of looking at things as well. We we spoke about, or you you mentioned silos earlier. I mean, it's a uh, you know an age old uh, you know issue in many businesses that have got enough departments um, to have these silos built up. You know, sometimes you can have silos in within silos as well, which is an absolute nightmare. But <laughs> co- collaboration <laughs> is key, isn't it? You know, across all all the departments. Um, I, I would also say. Uh, essentially manufacturing I mean that's my that's my backyard um yeah. but h- how do how would you with coaching and mentoring help senior leaders you know 
bridge that gap between different teams because it's an awful problem and and some leaders are naturals at it others aren't um you know the different teams and functions how 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 does coaching and mentoring um you know enable the business to break down its own internal barriers i mean that's that is a massive question that has got so many different layers of complexity to it depending on what departments, what divisions, how it's Well, set I've got up. another two hours, so fire, <laughs> <Yeah>. fire away. <laughs> right, let's get the couple, get the tea on. Um, yeah, it's, that's that's a really, really big one um, yeah. because depending on what the barriers are that are already in place, it's how you would approach it. But let's kind of like generalise ways yeah. that you can start moving in the right direction. So let's take a two-step approach. I talk a lot about the Myers-Briggs and DISC, okay? To start off with, you need to understand how people within your, your organisation best communicate and how they are best communicated to. Mm. Because if you've got three department heads and they're all like reds, they're all like aggressive, firing at each other, you are, you, you're you never going to get the balance. No matter what you do in an organisation, you are not going to be able to run that effectively because they're all going to want to be top dog. They're all going to be firing for it. If someone else realises that's how they act, some people actually change their mannerisms proactively, realising it's not getting them the best results. So then yep. you start to blend and change your team just by giving them a self-awareness. And that's really, really powerful. And that, for me, is, is a really, really good starting point. Um, I've also been a really big fan of making sure, using things like the, the racing model when you're running projects. You've got the right people in the right place when projects are being run. Cross departments, cross divisions, all the different touch points as it affects them. So big decisions that are happening and big projects that are happening, you've got the right people talking and having having, having that interaction so they buy into it. Yeah. You're understanding their thinking as much as they are yours. Again, silos, breaking down, people working in Unision, not just everyone in room because I've got a project on, which is the worst way of running it. The right people strategically yeah. is, a, is a really, really big part. Then the second part, I mean, you know what I'm going to come out with. Introduce coaching and mentoring into the organisation itself. So coach and mentor people to be able to coach and mentor. So bring yeah. that mindset in and then you are working between divisions. You would actively make sure, say, the head of supply chain is mentoring the sales director or a sales manager or a sales, whoever's next through the role, next through the ranks, you would make sure you're then bringing different thinking across departments and you're yeah. sharing that different way of approaching things. Yeah. And you're starting to learn each other and you're learning each other's areas of expertise because... And frustrations, probably. Frustrations, problems. And, you know, when you're having these safe conversations, not with your direct line manager, you yeah. are having different conversations and you're probably having a lot more honest conversations sometimes because you are going to say what you are allowed to say because it's a safe mm. space to be saying it and yeah. you're expected to say it if you're not you're not you're doing yourself a disservice you're wasting your time <clears throat> um, and the, the the connection you get with a, a strong mentor or coach it can let, literally last for life for some people because there is that that sharing of understanding and knowledge and thinking and then all of a sudden you've got you know you've got the biggest advocate in the business yeah it's going to be potentially the next commercial director the next not sales and marketing directors. Please stop doing that as businesses. Please. <laughs> You're making extra silos. Just do it differently. That's one another person, podcast. One budget. That's another podcast. <laughs> um, so, yeah, for me, it's bringing that in. So all of a sudden, you know, you've got that knowledge going six ways and sideways within an organisation. Yeah. And you've got mentoring and coaching up, down, sideways. And, and it's, it's the silos just, they do, they just, it dissolves. It brings collaboration across all the departments. So, yeah. so yeah. much easier. I, I, I've I've lived it, I've seen it, I've done it, and every time it has been successful if it's lived afterwards, not just as an initiative, not just as an activity, if once you've started it, you actually carry on living it and you carry mm. on asking those tough questions and asking to be asked those tough questions, not just kind of pushing people into their own little world and worrying about me and my budget. Yeah. It comes on to another point, which I was talking about, you know, when you set divisional budgets, you're setting divisions. So looking at joint accountability between teams yep. about how to make sure if one area of the business is falling, they are putting their time and resource to help support it as well and making it their risk, their bonus, their dividends, their whatever that's at risk if they aren't playing ball across the whole of the, the, the business rather than just running that, you know, rowing their own boat. Yeah. So when, when you've got a, an organisation that's got a, you know, a, 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 an established hierarchy, how do you how do you encourage this open dialogue and and the sharing of ideas through your your coaching and mentoring relationships? Yeah, I mean, again, it's about helping the individuals become emotionally intelligent. Yeah, um, 
what's what's mine is yours, not what's mine is mine. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people fall over. And that's where a lot of uh, senior executives fall over. They sort of close down the the, the, the uh, shutters around them, and they yeah. aren't really up for sharing. Look after their own dialogues. It puts them at risk, um, or heaven forbid, they should say something wrong. And then what's that going to do to their 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 ego or their standing within the organisation? So I think it's this all of this all of this starts at the very very top, mm. and then it trickles down. There is no point in starting with one executive mid level, even one person on the board. It needs to start at the CEO or yep. the owner or whatever. It needs to be right away across the board that we are actually going to be encouraged open dialogue and sharing of thoughts and ideas. Um, you know, we need to create an active learning mentality within an organization, which again, coaching and mentoring can, can very easily start helping create. Um, I'm going to say it again, bring coaching and mentoring into the, the business to help bring that sharing of information yeah. and mentor up down and sideways. So it's Make it part it of your culture. Like a bit of a broken record, but it, it will help. So it, I've seen it help. I've seen it work yeah. um, on, on numerous occasions. It just changes the way an business works. Um, and yeah, the, the, the idea sharing comes out. It, that's when the magic starts to happen. You've got people that know more than you do in area, but they're not allowed to talk about it or they won't talk about it, but they're given that permission to, to talk and to share and to put their ideas in the room. Yeah. Strongest absolutely. leaders, the strongest managers, strongest people that run businesses are those that don't do all the talking. They're the ones that actually bring the ones into the room that they know are the stars are the ones coming forward or the ones that are looking to grow and develop. Give them the opportunity to shine, bring their thinking into the room as well as your own thinking. And mm. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if they're coming up with ideas because it's making you look damn good at the same time, by the way, because you've grown that talent. You brought that in and you're not afraid to say, look, we should be doing it differently because you know, Sue's just talked about this new technology that we don't yeah. understand or don't know. We should be investigating and investing in this. AI is a massive threat. Well, I mean, we'll come on to that, I'm sure, but AI is a massive threat. Let's stick our heads in the sand and let us see if it goes away. Well, no, let's not. Let's kind of talk <laughs> more about it and let's look at how that can be working in our call centres and in our yeah, yeah. other parts of the business. Yeah, absolutely. Are there, are there any sort of specific leadership models or, or case studies that you would, you know, refer to in your coaching or mentoring sessions, you know, within within the manufacturing industry, John? Uh, well, again, you know, with over 20 years board level experience, I, I sound quite big headed. I'm pretty much the model. So <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of the people that I've worked with and all the industries I've worked in believe in you know, using real world success, failure and learnings from actual projects that I've worked on and actual projects I've been part of. Yeah. I've just kind of grow and develop quicker and further than they go down their own. So, you know, how not to launch a product, how to get into a new sector, how to grow a market or customer share, how to grow a team, um, how to improve company engagement. I, I would use actual models that I've, I've lived and worked to be totally honest. Okay. Um, there are external. Okay. There are, there are, you know, as regards to models, there are a multitude of different official models that you can use. Dozens to, and we've referred to some of them already today. Um, but some of them are actually my secret source. That I'm not going to be sharing here. You need to talk to me more about it to understand. <laughs> Absolutely. It. Uh, I don't mind sharing a lot of what I do, but I'm not going to give you everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And I wouldn't expect you to, I mean, this, this is, you know, the, the the sort of overriding benefit that I see as an outsider looking in or now a, a joint venture partner, the benefit of, of you being a coach and a mentor is that you can, you know, utilize your, your coaching skills to bring out, uh, you know, the, the information that the individual has probably got in there somewhere, but doesn't, doesn't know how to tap into it. But you've got that as you say, that real world experience of having been there and done it at board level for 20 odd years. Um, it, and you can add that into the, you know, into the mentoring um, capacity and, and sort of tackle things from both angles, you know, if that's what's required, you know, it's a, uh, it's a real interesting mix. You say secret source. I think that's part of the, I, I would see the coaching and mentoring capability as a secret source in, in you know in its own bottle you know yeah very it is very much so and it's it's yeah <laughs> if you give me a screwdriver okay i'm not an electrician so i'm happy to share my tools that i use but how you actually use that tool the skill and the knowledge and everything you've got behind what you're doing that's kind of the magic source yeah. so a lot yeah. of the time you'll see if, if you kind of follow me on linkedin the business of linkedin at all i'm always sharing tools and ideas and different approaches and, and things yes. like that but that I love doing because it, it gives people that, wow, I can do it differently. And do you know what? Give it a go. 
fire out, see if you can actually follow some of these models. We've talked about the eye grow, we've talked about the use model, we've talked about yep. fuel, all these different ones. Give it a go, start playing with it. Yeah, and if you're successful with it, I'm I'm pleased. My job here is done. There is more coaching and mentoring happening in the world. Yeah. But yeah. if you're not and you need that next help, ne next sort of little bit of help and next step, well, that's when obviously people reach out to to take that next step and start changing their business. So yeah, I think there's there is there's a bit of secret sauce in there. Of course there is. You know, the 20 odd years. You learn a lot. You learn what to do. You learn what not to do. Um, and also, you learn a lot about people and businesses and clients and industries. And there are, yeah. you know, there are key repetitions and our key ways of, of working to get the best from all of those situations. It's just stepping back, taking time, and actually doing it differently. Yeah. Have you have you have you sort of needed to adapt your your usual style of coaching and mentoring for for a particular? challenge or, or a unique challenge faced by a you know an executive or a manufacturing executive or or do you normally find that your your range of tools techniques different sources different secret sources <laughs> you've normally got a solution in in the in the in the kit bag or if, yeah. you, do you need to sort of look outside the box and try different things oh absolutely yeah yeah every single client is different and needs a different approach yeah um, if i was to try and do a one approach fits all it would be one approach fits none mm. um, we talked before about different styles of coaching that you can use to be more proactive or more reactive in the coaching method yeah again why i make sure whenever i work with someone i spend time before we actually start working understanding how they best communicate how they best like to be communicated to yeah that way it's the right pace the right speed and the right level of information to help them absorb it I work naturally at 100 miles an hour. You know that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I'm still nephew... catching up. <laughs> oh, oh well, you're going to be always, my friend. No, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. But yeah, I run 100 miles an hour all the time, and I'm acutely aware I need to slow my pace up for a lot of people um, to make sure it's at the right level at the right speed so they are learning and developing, and it's coming on board rather than it kind of like washing over and just kind of like a, you know, using a headlamp. That's the last thing you possibly want. You want yeah. that real recognition and that. So we spend a lot of time talking through and practicing models and different techniques when we're working together to make sure you're you're comfortable with it and you understand it and it's something that actually is going to solve the problem. It's not a case of oh bang great idea great idea da -da -da. right next thing next thing, next problem next. no let's really really interrogate it let's make sure it's something yeah. you can you can live with make sure it's something you can deploy and then let's make sure we've got smart objectives so you are deploying it we aren't just kind of talking about it yeah um, yeah it's, everyone's everyone's different. Um, it's really important to understand that everyone's going to book at a very, very different pace. Um, and one thing I do say to people is I'm going to give you a headache most likely. But I mean that in a positive way, because yeah. when we're working together, it's going to be, it's going to be hard work on the old brain. Okay. Yeah. We are going to be challenging things. We're going to be approaching in different directions. We're going to be questioning a lot of what's being done and different ways of doing it. The brain doesn't work at that pace and that speed all day every day we're in the we're doing what we need to do to, to get the job done when you step back and you start really challenging um it does really kind of it tires you out mentally it can exhaust you um and that time literally people will get a headache after we've we've, we've been working so later on that evening they'll sit there and go, oh, real headache come on so i say give yourself space don't make a sandwich make sure you've got room after the actual yeah uh, mentoring or coaching to get a breath of fresh air drink some water look into the distance and kind of like reflect on it to make sure you're getting the best from it and the most from it and it's kind of working at your pace for you but the the you know the benefits of of whether it's coaching or mentoring or both you know when, when the when the individual has that light bulb moment and they get it and they they start seeing the results that headache that you say you you may give them and we all you know it, it is a it is a mental challenge isn't it it can be a physical challenge but a, a mental challenge when they do get that light bulb moment, they can start to see the the difference that what you're coaching or mentoring them in is is working. That headache then becomes like a a pressure release valve. Surely, you, you know, it's sort yeah. of everything just sort of just it becomes a euphoria rather than a headache. Is it pressure built up? <laughs> yeah, before it's, yeah. it's released. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, it's like yeah. a steam valve. That's yeah, a, and it, it blows, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I, that for me is that's that's why I do what I do. Seeing those moments and having those moments for people to kind of let's work hard at it. Yeah, you're going to work hard. I'm going to work hard. We're going to make sure we do it the right way. And yeah. when we get there, you truly believe you are living it and you are changing things that way. 
it's just yeah, it's it's a, it's a great feeling. It's a worthwhile headache to have from the from from where. Yeah, I'd and you know, it's not every yeah. session, but it's yeah. some of the yeah. sessions, especially early doors, you'll find yeah. you do get kind of like that because you are just heck, and yeah, it can be spinning a little bit because it is just if you approach something very differently to how you normally do it, you've got to really think about it. Yeah, um, it's like that sort of learnt behaviour, isn't it? So you know, as, as a child growing up. You look at someone riding a bike and it's like, wow, what's a bike? You then get on the bike and, you know, you can start riding a little bit, but you need stabilizers. And then after a while, you can take the stabilizers off and eventually you, know, you can do wheelies on the bike. And that's like anything. Once you know how to do it, it becomes second nature. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. It's, it's basically becomes something you don't, yeah, you, you can, you can, you can drive. At the same time, you'd be listening to music. You'd be having a conversation. You don't have to do one thing at a time. It becomes second nature. And that's the beauty of coaching and mentoring. Eventually, you will be doing wheelies. <laughs> but can you do wheelies with no hands? I can't personally. Um, I I've never done it. I've just made that one up. <laughs> <laughs> wheelies with no hands. I, I, I would actually like to see that. Um, I have genuinely seen kids going down the middle of the road, able to do wheelies, holding the bike on the back wheel. Really? It's a skill set. I can't. No, no way, no how. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to try that on the roads these days, I have to say. Um, <laughs> great stuff. So um, we, we, we've we spoken about some of the, you know, the, the sort of global and, and sort of market challenges uh, within manufacturing, John, earlier in the, the, the sort of conversation. Um, when it comes to things like resilience and, um, you know, maybe becoming a bit more agile, you know, businesses. Mm -hmm and or individuals needing to pivot, for example. It's a word that's probably been overused, uh, you know, the last couple of years. Um, how do you how do you help senior execs in developing th the necessary resilience and, you know, what, what I suppose an adaptable mindset? Yeah, again, it's, it's sometimes the case of looking backwards to look forwards. So it's okay. really good to learn from past experiences and challenges yeah. and failures. Um, a lot of people are sort of striving and pushing forward and forward and forward, but it's about having that little bit of a, a, a slight stop and pause and look at what's gone well before, what's gone badly before, and what yeah. you learned from it. Yeah. I'm also a big, big fan of doing proper post-project reviews. Yep. Um, because every project you run is going to hit stumbling blocks and there's going to be issues with it. And again, I've used this phrase a lot. You know what you know, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. And yep. there should be three boards you've got with every project you run. You should be sharing that information within it. So the next project you're a step forward from it. So it's about making sure you've got that mindset of continuous improvement, I guess, um, and encouraging yeah. 360 feedback within an organisation to make sure you've got that thinking and challenge coming from all different directions, not just you're being driven by your direct line manager. Um, there are drives and challenges from all around you. People are seeing other weaknesses and other strengths, other opportunities. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, I'd, I'd say just, just embrace coaching and mentoring as a safe space to actually experiment and challenge because that's what it should be there for. It should be about you bringing challenge into the room that yeah. you want to investigate or you want to get past. So that for me is a massive part of developing that kind of real resilience and a mindset of a challenge isn't a problem. It's a potential solution and, and, and thinking of it and working with it in that particular way, um, Continuous improvement within any organisation should be the absolute cornerstone of it because if you're standing still, effectively you're going backwards, aren't you? You're going behind. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting you you brought up the you know the project scenario or project management. Mm -hmm. You know, you do a, like a review afterwards, and for me, what that sort of conjured up a thought in my mind of you know you you will review a project if it's been really successful and the customer's happy, great. But then if you're doing a proper review, there there will be certain individuals that would naturally look for all the the good stuff that's happened and there will be individuals that will go bloody hell this happened we were behind this but okay we got the projects over the line but this 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 and this happened uh that could have been a catastrophe i, th I think when when you when you're doing these reviews and, and this may feed into this building the resilient mindset is that you've got mm -hmm. to have that balance haven't you of celebrating the wins through the difficulties that you've had on any project or any product launch or whatever it might be yes you want to as you say you want to look back at previous experiences but not just from a negative point of view or not just from a positive point of view you've got to look at the whole the whole lot haven't you and and say well yeah th these things didn't quite work out right but we're going to put these fixes in so 
we know what to do next time. But really, I, I, I think sometimes we could all be a bit guilty of not celebrating the stuff that has been good, that has gone right, even if on certain individual days something negative might outweigh the rest of the positive stuff. You've still got to cling on to that, right? It, it, it It's, yeah, I mean, it, it, mindset is so powerful, isn't it? And perspective as well. But that having that balance of the what learns have we got, whether they're learning from something that failed or learning from something that really did work well, and maybe we need to do some more of that, guys. Um, I think that's where it's at, isn't it? It's, you know, looking at that balance. Learning, learning. Yeah. just always learning from it. Just and the learning. I love that. Success should be celebrated, no matter how small. Yeah. It is, then it becomes a kind of a train track and you're laying the track. So every little success is the next step forward. It's, it gains momentum. It, it, it creates that positivity. It creates, it creates that resilience within an organisation. Yeah. Small wins are still wins. We always sit there, as you've said, when there's a big problem, there's a big issue, there's a fallover, there's, you know, something's gone wrong, something manufacturing, we've had problems with uh, product quality or whatever it is, bang, big problems, big disaster zone, everyone feels, you know, down and negative, but actually, yeah. you know, there is some positive in there, we have found a new supplier, maybe it's a slightly better rate product, we need to do more on our quality control, but long term, there's the saving we can make from it. So there is just finding a positive and a negative and celebrating the, 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 the very small wins, on projects, I'm yeah, massively, massively. The post review of every project should be a proper, proper post review for every project. You don't yeah. just have project meetings all the way through, and then the project landed, bang, great products there, or, or you know, customers happy, or new services offered. It's about looking at right, as I said, the three boxes to make sure you know we knew what we knew. Yes, all of this was right. Yeah, we knew we didn't know this part of it. What what didn't go quite as well? What did we learn from it? And then. What didn't we know? What was the absolute blind side as it coming out of the, the side this time that next yeah. time we'll know? So then when you start your next project, that's almost your foundation for, right, this is what went right, this is what went wrong. Let's put them all into the right box. We now know how to manage those. Yeah. Again, jumping off from success. And also really, you know, within any organisation, I think you should be looking at encouraging Lean, Six Sigma, Kaizen, other proven practices to keep yeah, them to absolutely. adapt to change and streamline and smoothing and giving that different thinking and taking cost out whilst adding value. Yeah, yeah. And interestingly, things like uh, continuous improvements, Kaizen, all, all of these sort of methodologies are often associated with the manufacturing processes on the shop Definitely. floor. But, you know, you can look at the entire business. You can look at a sales process or marketing or um uh, you know, a HR, for example, you know, any, any sort of part of your business is, is open to improvement, continuous improvement and, and the methodologies that are, you know, quite commonplace these days, it should be wider business improvements, shouldn't it? You know, people tend to think of, of CI as a shop floor thing, as a man, oh, that's, that's a manufacturing thing or a quality thing, but actually yeah. it should be built into the psyche that it built into the culture of the business, right? 100% yeah I mean fundamentally that's where it started but the learnings from it transcend one division one department one area of any business the most successful businesses I've been in and I've, I've been through Lean Six Sigma Kaizen all sorts of those as you'd expect having worked yeah. for some of the, the companies I've been working for um, have actually put the management team in and it's been the management team have worked on it not just the manufacturing so it's like right this is what we're learning this is the you know, week or whatever it is we're going to spend working on this and, and learning all the different tools and different processes and different ways of doing it yep how are you going to bring that back into your business and doing you know real world examples of that as part of the workshops of how you're going to implement that how you're going to change the process how you know you're going to map what you're doing yeah to do it better smarter quicker or whatever so yeah 100 100 percent. all companies should be looking across all elements of the business at all the time all, to all the time really for improvements yeah. Yeah. and open to suggestions for improvements from any level at any point that's another really big area in a company to have some way of collecting and collating ideas and different thinking because someone's done the job all day every day it's going to find a way and see a way of doing it better or quicker are they Absolutely. going to feel like they can have that conversation or should have that conversation to their line manager well you'd like to think so but they probably won't it doesn't always happen no exactly but there's a way they could be having that conversation either anonymously or as part of some you know share the great ideas of the business, then you have a draw at the end of the month for the best ideas or randomly for ideas out of the box, then there's ways of, there's a ways of, you know, there's little things like that you can do to just bring and change the thinking in, in an organization, which um, 
doesn't cost a lot, but it can mean a lot, especially if you live it and do it, not just yeah. talk it. And that's that's another thing. If you're going to ask for suggestions and change, but you're ready to start acting on them, don't just ask for it and then just leave them in a file somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, that That's probably so common. Um, it's probably a big frustration for a, lo- a lot of businesses. Um, so my my final question for you uh, in, in the session is, you know, as as not just the manufacturing landscape, but the, the, the global landscape, you know, all of these things that we're all challenged by at the moment, you know, we've got global warming, we've got uh, wars, famine, we've got, you know, homelessness, we've got interest rates, you know, you name it, we're hit with everything. But in terms of leadership development, um, as the manufacturing and business landscape evolves, are there any trends that you sort of foresee in leadership development moving forward? I know we've got things like AI banging on the door and all the rest of it at the moment, but do you, do you think leadership development um, is going to change dramatically? And and if, if you do, how, how do you think coaching and mentoring might sort of factor into that? I think that there needs to be, and there will be pretty dramatic changes because the world around us has changed drastically yep. in the last three years. Yeah. You know, if you'd have written where we are five years ago, it would have been crazy sci-fi. People wouldn't have believed in. Absolutely. Um, and it's still changing. And the quicker things change, the quicker things can change. And with things like AI, um, the speed of change is the, the cycle is shortening between these major, major land slide, land slide changes within any organization, within any industry. So yeah, doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome isn't going to work anymore. So I'm, I'm not scaremongering, but you've got to be thinking about real change of your leadership and how you lead a business. So AI is here. It needs to be involved in your business at the minimum it could be something in the customer service and elements yep. of, of that part of the business. It, it should also could also be being used with product design. Um, there are a multitude of areas that, that should be investigated. That's another whole podcast for itself. Yeah. Um, digital leadership skills, I think, is going to become much more effective. You know, lead with proven technology within any organisation. Now, you've got to be at the front end of tech, one way or another. Do things faster, smarter, quicker, cheaper, uh, whatever needs to be, keeping costs down. Yeah, got to keep on innovating. Um, your competition or the next new startup is innovating. If we aren't innovating, if we aren't changing, and again, if you're not going forward, you are going backwards. Sustainability is only going to get bigger. Your customers, your customers' customers, are going to be measuring you on how sustainable you are yep. and how sustainable your your practices are. And that's that is definitely going one way only at the moment, in my eyes. Yeah, um, you're right. Diversity. Again, if you're not ahead of the curve, you're behind it and you're missing out, as we've, we've talked about earlier, about all that different thinking and different ways of approaching things, all that problem solving, bring diversity into your business, to bring diverse thinking. Um, I think that will become, got to be careful here. I think it has been a buzzword for some organisations. It has. It has. The exercise. Yeah. yeah. I need to be diverse. So let's look at employing something differently or doing something differently. But that's, that isn't diversity. Diversity is, is it can, diversity it comes in many many different levels and that is one of them. Yeah. Um, so I think that needs to be investigated a lot more by companies. Is going to be one that people love. Hybrid working, okay. Manufacturing, uh, lot, some elements obviously it isn't possible as we fully understand. Yeah. Hybrid working, love it or hate it, but the workforce is pretty much here to stay. And I know a lot of the big tech now make a lot of noises about pulling back, people back into the the offices and back onto the the floor, but they're losing a lot of people in in and a lot of love. Yeah. At the same time of doing that. So yeah. I think understanding how you can make that work. You know, for me, the big issue with hybrid working is trust. I think that is the fundamental in there. You've got a management team or a manager or a leader or a business owner who is used to having their their, their claws into everything in the business yep. together and, and doesn't fears delegation and fears letting go. That in my experience has been one of the major things behind hybrid working not being deployed. And not empowering the individuals to actually be trusted and give them that opportunity. And maybe give them the opportunity to fail to then make sure they don't fail again. But you understand yeah. you're working together to get the right hybrid work life balance because people are realizing you know, as generations change, it's more about life than it is work. Whereas, Absolutely. to be honest, there's a lot of us in senior management, it's been all about work, not about life to get to where we are. Well, patients don't want that anymore. 
yeah. they, they want to be able to enjoy as they go through. So yeah, that brings me to the well-being, which is the next thing. If you're not looking after your people, the people won't look after you. And they are sign on quitting, uh, voting with their feet. And I think that's gonna that's gonna yeah. carry on. It's gonna become if you aren't the company that offers that well-being, I don't know, like coaching and mentoring, for instance, into your business. Um then someone else will be, and they will be looking after the mental state and the physical state of their employees and giving them that continuous learning, learning and improvement, which yeah. most people kind of crave. We all want to improve. We all want to do things better. So I think having that mentality within organisations um, is, is key. And the other thing really is going to be succession planning. I think with the speed of people moving on and out of organisations at the moment, succession planning is going to probably become more important now than it ever has done. Absolutely. Not leaving massive gaps in companies and not leaving them with risk areas. And again, we talk about silos of knowledge. Succession planning breaks down the silos of knowledge because you're sharing it across departments when you are working on the succession planning. But again, that's probably another podcast. Uh, well, it is. I mean, you and I did a, a joint article a while back, didn't we, on uh, on LinkedIn on on succession planning and and how uh, you know exec search or headhunting and and coaching can sort of uh, factor into that. Um, so John, it's been a fantastic couple of conversations. Um, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Um, I always say to people, every podcast I do, I'm just soaking up all the knowledge and learning, uh, every day's a school day. Uh, but that's a good thing because the more I learn from, from guests on the podcast, it just adds more and more value to my you know, executive search candidates and and clients as well. So it's it's all Perfect. it's all feeding the uh, the the UK manufacturing ecosystem. So uh, uh, in tr my true comic fashion, I'll say carry on coaching, um, <laughs> and I, I look forward to seeing you again uh, for our next leadership uh, podcast, which will be in a few weeks' time. Um, thank you very much. So that wraps up another episode of insights for manufacturing i hope the listeners and youtube viewers have enjoyed our discussion thanks again to john cox thank you for listening and look out for the next episode of insights for manufacturing see you next time and bye-bye <laughs>